In general, what I'm most impressed by in your portfolio is the fact that you have an excellent variety of all different kinds of art materials represented throughout all of your pieces. That's really terrific because it shows that you're a very versatile student, that you're comfortable working with different kinds of art materials, that you know how to work with charcoal, you can work with watercolor, you can do sculpture, you've done um, some uh, Photoshop pieces, some digital work, and that's really terrific. I think schools really want to see that you have that versatility, that you're really able to kind of move fluidly throughout a bunch of different materials. Um, also, the fact that you're able to produce pieces in both black and white and color media, I think is very important because sometimes you see students, they're only using black and white. They don't really show that they're capable of using color, and you have some pieces that I think are quite successful as black and white, but it's also very clear in some other pieces that color is a concept that you understand very well and that you've really taken the time to explore. So I think in that area, you're doing really great. Um, there's just an overall kind of sense of versatility to your portfolio. And I think that demonstrates to a school that you're really willing to experiment, you're willing to kind of spread yourself out and try all sorts of different things. And I think when you're applying at the undergraduate level, that's really critical to show a school that you're interested in all these different kinds of things. So that's great. Um, Another thing I would just say is the quality of your photographs of your artwork are excellent. Um, I'm looking at all the images, the photographs seem like you have very good even lighting, you've cropped everything, um, you know, the colors seem to be pretty accurate, all the photographs look great. That seems like a small thing, but you'd be surprised sometimes if somebody has a great piece of artwork but the photograph is lousy, it can really ruin your portfolio. So you've done a great job of being extremely thorough about um, getting really good um, photographs of your work. Um, I think overall, the only area of the portfolio that in general I'd work on is I would try to have a few more drawings. Um, the variety is terrific, but I think that drawing is really kind of essential, it's kind of the core of a portfolio, and I might recommend perhaps one, maybe two more drawings that are perhaps a little bit more gestural, a little bit looser, that, that show that you you can be a little bit riskier with your drawings. Right now your drawings in general, they tend to be a little bit tight and conservative, and I'll, I'll get into some more specifics um, in a few minutes in the individual pieces to tell you what I think you can do um, to improve upon that. But in general, I, I think you're in great shape. I, I'm not I don't have any huge concerns about any kind of glaring problems with um, your portfolio overall. But there are some specific things that I do think are worth revisiting. And some of them aren't huge changes. Some of them are things that you can just sort of tweak here or there, and they would make a big difference. So um, now I'm going to go through and look at the individual pieces and give you some thoughts about um, those pieces. OK, so looking at this first drawing here, um, I would say that the first thing that kind of jumps out to me is that the composition, in other words, how you placed the subject on the page is not fantastic. It's, it's sort of symmetrical, kind of placed dead center. It's not the most dynamic composition. It's a little bit static. And so the next time you sit down and do a drawing, I would just kind of think about ways that you can be more creative as far as how you place the subject on the page. Like I would try to avoid symmetry. I try to avoid putting the object dead center in the middle of the page. I would try to emphasize diagonals so that the piece feels like it has a stronger sense of movement. This drawing to me, it's a little bit stiff. So I might try to loosen up a little bit more. Um, the background isn't particularly interesting. It seems kind of bland, like there's sort of nothing going on. Um, the contrast could be better. I feel that in general, you know, most of the strong darks are kind of isolated to the lower section of the shadows underneath the shoes. Um, the rest of the drawing, there is this kind of grayness to it. Um, and I feel like in the pan area, you're kind of lacking a lot of details. And that, that's an area that I think you could probably um, really punch up quite a bit. The drawing's okay. I just feel that um, it doesn't quite have the presence that I'd like it to have. And a, a huge part of that's the composition, but I also think it's just that your drawing style, it's a little bit tight, a little bit conservative. If you could show that um, you could be maybe a little more rigorous, a little more physically aggressive with the drawing material, um, I think that could really help out a lot. Um, this piece I think is good. I think it's clear that it was done from direct observation from a nude model in class. And so that's great to show 
you know, that you're working from direct observation, that you've obviously taken um, either a college level summer class or maybe a continuing education class. And it's great because I think not only did you really kind of capture the stance of the model and that you did it fairly quickly, you know, just using watercolor, but actually my favorite part of this particular piece is the shadow that the model is casting on the background. I think the shadow is really great. It, it sort of anchors the figure into a background. You know, lots of times I see figure drawings done in class and they just look like this random nude person floating in the middle of this blank space and sort of awkward looking. And so I really like the way that she seems really immersed into the background because of that shadow. Um, and it seems like you did a really good job mixing your colors. You know, it doesn't look like you just dip the colors in, you know, took them straight from the palette. It seems like you really did take the time to kind of layer the strokes very nicely. The highlights on the figure where you left the white of the page, I think are especially um, useful. I think those areas really kind of bring out the sense of lighting in the piece. It makes it more luminous, more dramatic. And, you know, watercolor is tricky because sometimes people just want to cover the whole page, but sometimes just those little areas of the white of the page that you leave can be extremely powerful. Um, this drawing, I think, compositionally speaking, is much stronger than the first drawing that I saw um, with the pants. I think there's a couple things you have going for you. First of all, the composition is really strong here. The composition um, has all sorts of diagonals. For example, over here, this diagonal that's on the shelf, the diagonal over here, you got this other diagonal going the other way that's part of the broom. And in general, the drawing just has a much kind of looser feel to it. It seems like um, you weren't so uptight when you were drawing it. It seems like you were more kind of physically engaged with the material. Um, it's also great to see that you're using charcoal. Um, the, the kind of typical high school drawing material is pencil. Most high school students only draw in pencil and haven't tried anything else, which I don't really understand because there's so many incredible, wonderful drawing materials out there that you can use. It just seems crazy to me that people would limit themselves to only drawing with pencil. So I, I love that using the charcoal, you can see the charcoal drawing, um, the materials really giving you this kind of richness to your drawing, that the blacks that you have like up here in the upper corners, um, down here as well, in this corner as well, those really dark dark, rich, black areas, they, they really give your drawing a kind of depth to it. And you really feel like this area back here is pushing way back in space. And then that allows these subjects, like these objects, these jars, to really kind of pop forward. And so I think in terms of contrast, light and dark contrast, this drawing is much stronger than the other one. It's certainly more dynamic in terms of composition. Um, I do think that this drawing needs a little bit more time though. I think I would recommend at least one, maybe two more hours on this drawing. Um, you know, I love the looseness, but I do feel that there are some areas that feel a little bit unresolved. Like I think this area here gets a little bit confusing. I'm not totally sure what's happening. Um, for example, this object is very clear, really easy to read. You know, this object as well, the broom as well. But here I get really kind of lost. This area also seems sort of unresolved. And so those are two areas I might just go back in. Um, I add a little more detail. I can also see from the drawing that you're not drawing with your erasers enough. It seems like the majority of the drawing is just done directly with the charcoal and that you're not really using your erasers to layer and add charcoal. So what I would recommend, I would definitely get yourself a kneaded eraser. I would get yourself um, a white Mars plastic eraser and I would get yourself an eraser stick. Having those three different kinds of erasers are fantastic because each of those three erasers does something a little bit different. And if you could use the kneaded eraser to just kind of push the charcoal across the surface of your paper and, and really kind of blend and layer, I think it's gonna make the drawing even richer than it is. It's gonna have even more depth. Um, right now, I just kind of feel like this drawing is like about 70% there. Like it just, it needs to go further. And I, I think the kind of classic problem I see with a lot of high school pieces is that they're just not finished, that they're, they're so close to being done, but if they could just do, you know, another hour or two that they would really do better. So this piece, I think, is one of the strongest pieces in your portfolio. I think it's, it's a beautifully um, conceived set of pieces. The fact that it's um, a triptych, three images that become one, 
is sort of a more unusual format. That's not something that you see all the time. And I love the way that that demonstrates kind of your thinking, that you were able to kind of conceive of these three compositions, think about how they related to each other, and really conceive of them as a group. And so that, I think, really demonstrates your thinking process. Um, your painting technique with the gouache, I think, is impeccable. Um, the colors are beautifully balanced, I think, especially this piece in the middle, the, the harsh contrast of the black against these really highly saturated colors is extremely effective. Um, it seems like you did a lot of research, you know, kind of thinking about, you know, the 1950s family life, that era, that time period, um, you know, kind of the clothing style, thinking about the kinds of patterns and, and some of the, um, you know, sort of social concerns of that time period. I mean, that's what I love about this piece is that it seems like you didn't just sit down and draw something, but you actually went and you researched, you really thought about your subject quite a bit. Um, so they're beautifully designed. They look great together as a group, but they also stand distinctly on their own. So you've done a, a really great job in this piece. This piece is fantastic. Um, this piece, I would say, has a good concept, but I feel like compositionally, there's an awful lot of blank black space and background. Um, it, it seems like the string is a really kind of critical part of this image because the string is basically what kind of connects all the hands together and it's, it's kind of what interweaves everything. But I feel that the red string is barely visible, that it really needs to be maybe a more highly saturated red. Maybe you've got to um, just pump it up a little bit more. I, I really lose the red string and I think that's an area of the piece that you really want to um, just kind of showcase a little bit more. I also feel like there's not enough string. Like I, I feel like if you maybe quadrupled the quantity of string and, and really enriched this much more, that there'd be more to look at because the hands are kind of static. Like I look at this hand and this hand and this hand and this hand, and those are all horizontally oriented, which makes it kind of static looking. And then these kind of big blank spaces of black they start to feel really empty. And so I think this is actually a piece that I might crop. Like I might just crop here, crop here, crop there, and crop there. You know, anytime there's a part of your composition that you don't need, that you can get rid of, get rid of it because it's just kind of taking up extra space. Because for me, the most important part of this piece is this kind of general central area. That's really where kind of the action is happening in your composition. You want to kind of cut out all the unnecessary parts of that and really focus on that. So this this piece, I think, is a good start. I don't really think it's fully there yet. I, I feel that it's kind of the beginning of the piece and that you're going to have to really kind of pump it up a lot more. But But think about ways that you could get that string to interact with the hands more. I feel like the string is just sort of drawn over the hands. Maybe you could play with the positioning of the hands. It seems like the repetition of this exact same hand positioning four times. It's a little bit monotonous after a while. You know, I'd like to see maybe 10 different hand positions and have you repeat those. So if you could just sort of pump up this piece, you know, put it on steroids or something, then I, I think it could be really great. It's a good premise, but you need more work on it. Um, this piece I especially like because it's a 3D piece and a lot of students in high school don't typically work in 3D media and so that again shows your versatility. It's also beautifully lit, you know, I think when you do sculpture lighting is so critical when you take a photograph of it and the Christmas lights are, are kind of a nice kind of dramatic, you know, moment in it. Um, you know, I, I love especially this part in here, the section where the, these sort of silhouetted figures are kind of emerging out of the book area. Um, this area for me with these kind of tree-like forms gets a little flat. I sort of feel like maybe there's something you could do there to kind of reorient the trees. Um, maybe they could kind of branch out a little bit more. For me, the, the best part of this piece is this section over here. And I think it's because of the interaction of the figures with the trees. You know, I, I love the way the figures just, they kind of start down here at the bottom. They're kind of congregating. They kind of work their way upwards. And there's a really wonderful way I can kind of travel and sort of circulate in that area. Um, this is the lively part of your piece. It's kind of where the action is. And so the, the consequence of that, because this part of your piece is so exciting, this section over here on the left-hand side feels kind of drab and empty. And so I sort of feel like I might either get rid of this section entirely 
or populate it somehow with even more figures in a different pattern or maybe change the height of it. You know, the fact that this is the same height as this area over here, I think is a little bit too predictable. Again, that symmetry you know, that you have in this composition isn't helping you a lot here. And so if there's a way you could kind of rebalance that, um, I think that could be very helpful. But the lighting is good. Um, I, I love the, the different kinds of media that you're mixing different medias within one piece. That's also something a lot of students don't tend to do. A lot of students, you just see them, they just use one material and that's kind of it. And so I think this demonstrates not only your compositional skills, but also your kind of willingness to kind of mix and experiment with different kinds of materials and see how they interact with each other. Um, this piece I, I think is really fun, really kind of whimsical and playful. Um, I, I think it's beautifully composed. Uh, the only thing that I might reconsider in the composition is maybe a little bit of cropping because I feel like th this is so wonderful and lively and I feel like I could spend so much time kind of getting lost in all these kind of characters and what their relationships are and you know th these lines that you have kind of pushing them upwards in the page are are very kind of fluid and, and sort of delicate and lovely and so there's a really great balance there. I mean for me the best part of the composition is in here because you're really balancing the white space and the figures beautifully. But I think if I were to work on the composition, I might re-crop it because you don't have any item in this composition that's cropped. Like this person up here, this person here, this person here. It'd be nice if, you know, maybe we just cropped his head off so he could kind of go off the page. You know, maybe you just crop half of this figure, maybe you crop half of this figure, or maybe you get these lines to kind of push outwards in a more severe diagonal direction because cropping is such a great compositional way to kind of spread your composition out more outside of the boundaries of the page. I feel that right now your subject matter it's so kind of confined just to this one center of the page and so I don't see a huge reason as a viewer to want to go into that corner of the page, to want to go off to that edge. And so I sort of feel like in this composition, you're not really engaging with the edges and the corners. It's a really kind of isolated composition. Um, the color is really fun in this piece. I, I like that it's a limited palette, you know, that the figures are mostly, you know, black and white, but there, there are kind of slight differences, you know, like this figure here is a little bit more yellow. This one's a little bit more blue. And so there is variation, but um, it, it still feels quite congruent. I, I still feel that it's cohesive and then these kind of bursts of this very saturated bright yellow, those areas are really terrific because they're, they're, they're kind of this little surprise waiting for you at the bottom of the composition. They really pop with the piece and then you know that against kind of these dark blacks and then this bright yellow. I think is really, really nicely done. And I, I kind of rarely see black and white images that have drops of color mixed in into them working well. Most of the time, the color and the black and white, they kind of fight for your attention in a way. And I think in this piece, you've integrated them very successfully. So I, I would really keep that. I, I think it's just a compositional thing. If you can just think about the cropping a little bit more, that would really help. Um, so these pieces here I, I find very kind of mysterious and sort of ethereal looking and, and they're really kind of, they kind of make me really curious because the imagery is not so straightforward. It's not so literal. You know, that first drawing I looked at a few slides back was obviously a set of legs and a pair of shoes and in terms of subject matter I wasn't really that intrigued. It was pretty much, you know, what you see is what you get. Um, you know, these images on the other hand really seem so much more provocative. It seems like there's sort of this ambiguous narrative going on and I, I'm really intrigued by the subject matter here. So th this is a really important piece for you because it really demonstrates that you are thinking when you make your art, that you're not just, you know, a trained art machine, you know, that just draws things, but that you're really thinking and you're brainstorming and you're thinking about subject matter. And that's, an, again, another kind of approach and technique that I don't see very often in high school. I think for a lot of students in high school, the whole point is just make it as realistic and make it look as photographic as possible. But if you think about it, there's nothing creative about drawing like a Xerox machine. You know, you really need to interpret, you have to have something to say. And these pieces do that. These pieces really have kind of an opinion, they, they have a story behind them. I, I'm really excited about that part of these pieces. Now, your presentation, on the other hand, I would reconsider. Um, this may well be the actual format of the piece that it 
it really does have this gigantic border. But I think the fact that you have four images in one photograph and you have so much white border, it actually makes it hard in the slide to really appreciate all the details. Like I feel like looking at the slide right now that I'm missing all the subtleties, all the little moments in these pieces that I want to appreciate, I just can't see them. So I think even if this is the way the pieces actually look in real life, I think for the sake of the portfolio, I would just crop closer into the image. Like I don't think I would crop right on the image because I, I love the kind of shape of these pieces, you know, that they kind of suggest a border without actually having a border. But I, I would cut back on the white because if you just cropped here like that with maybe, you know, a little bit of a border around the image, that would enlarge each image and then we would still see all four of them and we would appreciate more what's going on in there. And, and that's, you know, totally acceptable. It's not like you're cropping half of the image, you're just kind of cutting down on the border a little bit. I just think the border is a little bit problematic. It, it kind of keeps us from really seeing the imagery. And um, again, you know, it seems like you're playing with so many different processes and you're really showing your versatility in these pieces. The other thing I like about these is they work really beautifully as a group, just like the set of gouache paintings um, a ways back, you know, have these sort of repeated motifs, you know, these kind of vertical lines that are kind of repeated throughout the pieces, these kind of dark shadowy figures, um, the layering, the transparency, I think is also beautifully done. So there's so many things that I want to appreciate about this piece, but because your format is kind of keeping me from doing that, um, I, I just think I would reconsider how you make that happen. So th this page is really interesting because it's obviously a sketchbook page. And um, what I like about seeing this is that it's a really kind of full, rich representation of your thinking process. And, um, you know, sketchbooks are fantastic. I think everyone who studies visual arts should have a sketchbook and should use it. And the sketchbook to me is kind of like the primordial soup of being an artist is like where things, you know, become into being and where things kind of germinate and, and kind of develop. So that that's wonderful. And what I like about this sketchbook page, number one, it's really full. And number two, it's obvious that you are pursuing an idea and that you're troubleshooting and brainstorming and exploring all of your different options. It shows how much you're thinking. There's a lot of writing involved throughout the sketchbook. I can see that you're taking notes, you're researching, you're asking yourself questions. And, and so it's a really great kind of representation of your thinking process. And again, that's another skill that I don't see a lot in high school students. Again, most high school students, they just want it to look like a photograph and that's kind of their ultimate goal and um, what I see here is that you're a thinker, that you're really somebody who thinks deeply about what they're doing and how they're doing it. But the other thing that's great too about this page is that it also shows focus. It also shows that you know, you're not just jumping around doing things totally randomly with no purpose whatsoever. You know, it really does seem like there is kind of a train of thought you know, and it's a loose train of thought, you know, the train of thought doesn't have to be linear by any means, you, you can jump around and stuff, but it seems like you did have a specific goal in mind and that you, you were able to really focus on that. So th this is a really good sketchbook page. Um, sketchbook pages can be kind of tough because sometimes I see a lot of sketchbook pages that I just don't think really show that so much, but I think this one really does. And so I, I think for that reason, this is a good piece for your portfolio. Um, this, this is the only piece in your portfolio that I don't think I would submit. Um, I think all the other pieces are either ready to go or maybe need another hour or two or just a little tweak here or there. This piece I would really reconsider because I think that, um, first of all, the imagery on its own is weak. I think that um, it seems really obvious that you were drawing from photographs. And as I look at the compositions, they're not very engaging. I feel, especially this one, there's just so much blank, empty space where just nothing is happening. This one too, I mean, compositionally speaking, I would crop here and then crop here so that the hand is going off the page, the head's going off the page. Then you eliminate like 50% of the background that you just didn't need. And then we can really focus on her. Same thing here. I mean, you could probably crop here, 
which is about a third of the composition, and we really wouldn't be missing out on anything. So you gotta make sure when you're looking at your compositions that if it's unnecessary that you get rid of it. It's like packing for a trip you know, to Europe, you don't want to pack anything that you don't need. You're not going to pack your art history textbook if you don't need it. So you, you got to just only take what you need, only what's essential. So that that's kind of, for me, the weakest part of these pieces is just the backgrounds are so kind of dead and ignored. Um, I'd rethink that. Um, I also think that the use of the material in this piece is not as successful as your other pieces. I feel that it's really obvious that there is probably colored pencil or perhaps it was chalk pastel um, you know, this kind of red color that was layered over um, the watercolor. And it just seems like the red um, colored pencil is really separate from the watercolor. It's very obvious that you have two different media. They don't seem integrated at all. They, it really kind of seems like the red is almost invading the watercolor painting, like it's not supposed to be there, like it's some kind of bacterial growth that's happening on the face. So I, I think for this piece, you've you got to either do one of two things. You've got to either um, just stick with watercolor and only use that material and do it really well, or you have to really beef up this red and just deeply immerse it and just spread it all over the entire page because the red's really isolated. You know, if I look at this one over here, you have this huge patch of red in this section over here, and then it doesn't really appear again until here or here. And so I think the fact that you kind of isolated the red areas and that you don't have a lot of them, they look a little hesitant. It seems like you, you weren't so certain that you wanted to do it. I mean, it, it's like you do it or you don't. You gotta do it all the way if you're gonna do it. So I, I think um, th this piece I would take out of your portfolio or spend another eight or 10 hours on it because it's got a really long ways to go. Um, I would say contrast isn't great either. I mean, this piece on the left-hand side you have this black shape, which is your darkest shape, but then in the face area, you're really losing me in terms of contrast. It's really gray. There's only one shade of gray. I mean, it's basically this one gray. The lighting is really confusing as well. Like, you have this light on her face, which seems consistent also with the hand, but then it's weird to me that the ear is like glowing. It's, it's just kind of strange. So I, I think I would make sure that you take a closer look at the lighting situation. I'm guessing you were using a photograph when you did this because it doesn't seem like imagery that was drawn from direct observation. So it, it could be that maybe the photograph you were drawing from wasn't good to begin with. I'm not a big fan of that anyway. I think people should be drawing from direct observation. But I just feel that there's a lot of problems with this piece on this right hand side too. The hand seems abnormally large. And then the foreshortening on the face, um, I think is sort of awkward, strange looking. The neck is weird. I'm not sure if this is the edge of the neck or if it's the hair covering the neck. It's sort of hard to say. And so I just sort of feel like there's a lot of parts of this drawing that this piece that, um, you know, are really kind of holding you back. And I, I would recommend taking it out and just doing a new piece. Sometimes um, it's not worth spending more time on a piece if it's kind of fundamentally flawed. And, and this for me is one of those pieces. There's just so many kind of fundamental problems with it that you actually would be better off just starting over and doing something else. Um, again, with cropping, no reason that you need these gigantic white borders in your pieces. I can also see that the white borders are not consistent. This is sort of bluish tinted, goes to white, goes to blue tint, goes to white. It's not an even perfect white border. If you're going to do it, like I would go into Photoshop and make a big white file and then just drag the piece in. Um, this is also a little bit crooked. If I were to redo this piece, you know, I would just crop at the edges in Photoshop and just do the two images like that side by side, just leave out the white border altogether because the white border in this piece is not critical to our appreciation of the piece. And it's it's not, you know, huge, it's not helping you. It's kind of hurting you in fact, because it diminishes the size, the viewing size of the um, actual piece. And then again, we kind of miss out on some details that we might want to be looking at. So. I, I would really rethink this piece. It's the only piece that I really kind of have reservations about um, as far as including it into your portfolio. But I think generally speaking, you're, you're in really great shape. Um, you know, I, for some people, I have to tell them that they need to start from scratch, which is not always easy to hear. Some people are 
really pretty much ready to go, I think you're in that category. You're pretty much ready to go. This is the, this one last piece is the only one I'd rethink. Everything else, it's a few tweaks here or there, but um, I think in general you're in great shape, and I, I think you'll you'll probably do very well.